No, he didn't do it. I was angry with God. My brother got locked up. I was 14. I'm 40 years old now. Just ripped my heart apart. He's actually innocent. On December the 16th, 1994, in the Circuit Court of the State of Maryland, I was convicted by a jury of 12 on two counts of first-degree murder, one count of attempted murder, and three counts of use of a handgun. And on March 9th, 1995, I was sentenced to double life without parole plus 60 years. On April 16th, 1994, two gunmen opened fire on Tomar Locker, Keisha Craig, and Keith Smith. Mr. Smith died at the scene. Ms. Craig was able to drive her car to Southeast Washington Hospital Center. She unfortunately died at that scene, but Tomar Locker was the one survivor. According to Tomar Locker, James Fowler and Anthrone Williams, also known as Southeast Williams, were the gunmen. Both men were charged. Mr. Fowler's trial was first, and he was found guilty. He received two life without parole sentences consecutive plus 60 years. Tomar Larker, the surviving victim, drove from North Carolina to Washington, D.C., where he gunned down Reuben Ratman Bell in the lobby of Washington Hospital Center. Mr. Bell was there for chemotherapy. According to Tomar, and in his own defense, he testified that Reuben Bell was the shooter. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Ruben Ratman Bill. The thing is, everybody was scared of Ruben Bell. Ruben Bell was a boxer and a drug dealer and somebody that nobody wanted to cross. And numerous people came out after he died, after Tomar killed him, that they were not comfortable coming forward with what they knew um, because he could hurt not only them, but their family members. Why weren't you at the initial trial? Reputation Red had, I, he had no picks. He was trying to kill you, your family, and everything, or whatever. Reuben Bell's own boxing coach, a man named James Scott, signed an affidavit saying that Reuben Bell had confessed to him that he was responsible for the crime and not Mr. Fowler. Um, but again, that even this boxing coach said in his affidavit he was afraid for himself, he was afraid for his family if he came forward while Mr. Bell was alive. James Fowler has attempted to challenge his conviction in every way possible from 1994 up until today. At his trial, he took the stand and he said that he didn't participate in this crime. He knew the people who were involved, but he wasn't there. He had an alibi. The second issue is whether or not Tomar even knew the identity of the people who shot him and shot his girlfriend. Um, at the time that he was arrested for shooting Reuben Bell, he confessed to it and he also said to the police, and there are handwritten notes by police officers to this effect, Danny, who's Tomar's brother, told him the names of the people who shot him. So is this really eyewitness testimony or is this somebody repeating a rumor? Hi, is this Tomar Locker? This is Sabrina Chavez. Um, I study at Georgetown University. You're somebody who came up in one of the cases I'm working on, and I just wanted to know if there's any chance I could just speak to you a bit about it. Hang up. This is one of the most complicated, frustrating, and fascinating cases I've ever worked on. And part of that is because there's so many problems with this case. There are witnesses who have changed their stories. There are witnesses who have recanted. There are new witnesses who have come forward with information. 
um, sort of everyone consistently saying that they were all afraid of Reuben Bell, and that's why they didn't come forward at the time of the trial in 1994. Working on this case has showed us the very human consequences of the injustices in the justice system and how outrageous and complicated these cases can be. It is important we don't forget those who have been silenced, who have had their voices taken away from them unfairly, and who have never had a chance to tell their story. It is on us to help get the message across and to create collective social action that would right their wrongs and bring justice to James and many more like him. So when it really comes down to it, you know, when somebody really is innocent of us, of, of something they've been convicted in certain time on, the, 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 the sincerity and genuineness, it really is it, brighter than any other light. Yeah. When something is out of your hands, you have no control over it. So you have to sit there and just hope that someone else in the justice system see what you see and know and they will come up and say, well, you know, this 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 person deserves a new trial. Man, I think about it all the time. Like every day, every minute. Like the only day that I don't think about. But it just I don't understand that. I just don't. I mean, I haven't lost so I mean, since he's been incarcerated, he's been raising me over the phone through letters. I do believe one day that he will be home. Um, I'm never going to give up, and that's our logo, like, never give up. The sad and tragic situation involving this case has also left myself and my family being victims to an unjust system. I continue to sit in prison for a crime I'm truly innocent of committing. I thank you all for your time. May God bless you all. College from a federal prison. Yeah, uh, Dirk Miller, two five three six seven zero one six. James was at my mom's house, and I was driving, and Peanut was at my mom's house, and me, me, Red Man, and um, our son was in the van at the time of the shooting. James was still at my house. Just to make it clear, James was at your house with your mom, your friend, yes. and your aunt. Yep. You drove the car with yep. Southeast and Ratman to the scene. And James Fowler was not in the car with you guys. Not at all.